Hi guys, I'm Suprabha. In last video, we studied the four vector operations: vector addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. In this video, we'll continue two more operations: that is dot product and cross product. Starting with dot product, it is nothing but multiplying magnitudes of two vectors and multiplying cos of angle between them. So, dot product is represented as a vector dot b vector is equal to multiplying the magnitudes. Magnitudes given by the modulus sine and cos of the angle between them. The range of theta is from zero to pi. Now, why specifically cos theta? If the vectors are in the same directions, only then we consider the magnitudes. So, multiplying magnitudes is nothing but multiplying their lengths. Now, if you see these two vectors. They are in the same direction, so we'll take the cos of angle between them. If they are in the opposite direction, the angle will be zero. Now project a vector on b. So this part will be a magnitude into cos theta, and this whole part is b magnitude. So we get multiplying two magnitudes into cos theta. Now if you see this. This result gives us a scalar quantity, so we can say that dot product al always gives a scalar. We'll understand it more by considering one example. Let a is equal to two i cap plus three j cap plus four k cap, and let b is equal to three i cap plus four j cap plus two k cap. C now consider the Three coordinate axes x, y, and z. Now cons also consider unit vectors along these three coordinate axes respectively i, j, and k. Now for dot product, if we multiply two unit vectors together, i into i cap into i cap, i cap dot i cap. So As these both unit vectors are along the x direction, cos of angle between them will be zero. So as theta will be zero, cos theta will be sorry, cos zero is one. So we'll get some quantity or some magnitude. Now if we consider i cap into j cap, the angle between those is ninety. We know that cos of cos of ninety is zero. So the resultant will be zero. Similarly goes for i cap into k cap. Again the angle between these both is ninety. So the output will be zero. This takes place for i unit vector along with i, j, and k. Similarly you can go for j and k. So resulting dot product can be given as or a vector dot b vector. We'll consider it as c vector. Only multiplying the magnitude c, i cap into i cap, we saw it is equal to one plus three into four twelve plus four into two eight. So this is twenty six. Now if you see output is only magnitude, no i cap, j cap or k cap that generally gives the direction is present here. So we can see that this is a scalar quantity. Moving on to cross product, it is multiplying the magnitudes of two vectors and sine of theta between them. So we can write it is denoted as a vector cross b vector, multiplying the magnitudes and sine theta between them, and n. Now this n is n cap. So this n cap is nothing but the unit vector. We know. Cap indicates unit vector. Unit vector along the resultant vector a vector into b vector. This is important because here also we were considering magnitudes and a theta angle. Here also we are considering magnitudes and theta angle. But we have n cap, so we say that cross product always gives vector as the output because. This unit vectors gives us the direction. Magnitude and direction is nothing but vector. So same thing, 
it always gives a vector right hand rule now right hand rule simply consider fingers in this way so if this is a vector this is b vector and this is the resultant output right hand rule tells us that the angle between this resultant vector and a vector is 90 also the angle between resultant vector and b vector is 90 so if we consider same three coordinate axis x y z and unit vectors along them respectively we get now i cap cross i cap again two unit vectors along the x direction the angle between them it is zero sine of zero is we know sine of zero is zero now if we consider i cap into j cap i cap into j cap so the resultant vector will be along the z axis so we can write k cap the last i cap into k cap if you see i cap into j cap that is anti clockwise and i cap into k cap is clockwise if the direction goes clockwise we get the resultant vector along the j cap but the negative sign comes into picture that is in this direction minus j cap so we can simply conclude that the cross product between two unit products always gives us the resultant product in the negative direction for the clockwise and for the anti clockwise we will get the resultant product in the positive direction cross product is simplified using the determinant method so the determinant is formed likewise i cap j cap k cap and the coefficients of a ax by sorry ay az and the coefficients of the b vector bx by and bz okay we'll consider this part through one example if a is equal to 2 j cap and b is equal to i cap find out the cross products of the two vectors vector a and vector b so we'll denote it and we'll solve it using the three order determinant i cap j cap k cap coefficients of a if you see only the j is present rest to our zero and for b only i is present rest to our zero now if you solve this the i part will be 0 i into 0 minus j zero plus k k will give us 0 minus 6 this is cap sorry so answer will be minus 6 k cap now check out this was j cap into i cap j cap into i cap this is anti clockwise direction uh, just a second sorry this is clockwise direction j cap into i cap for clockwise direction we always get a negative result we are getting negative result in the k direction because two vectors are here the resultant vector will be at the z direction that is k cap so minus 6 k cap we will consider one more example so that concept will be more clear if a is this vector b is this vector find out the cross product between them so we can write i cap j cap k cap coefficients of a 3 2 5 coefficients of b 2 4 3 solve this we get i cap 6 minus 20 minus j cap 9 minus 10 plus k cap 
12 minus 4. So this gives minus 14 i cap plus j plus 8 k cap. So this is the resulting answer. I will again tell you just observe the output of dot product it was only magnitude so the output was scalar here the out output is magnitude and direction so the output is output of cross product is always vector one more thing dot product obeys two properties commutative and distributive associative that is a into b is equal to b into a and a into b c is equal to a b into c we are well known to these properties the only thing to be noted is that cross product is associative but it is not commutative it gives a cross into b cross is equal to minus b cross into a cross this is important please note dot product is commutative and cross product is not commutative because we get such kind of result. Now the last part triple product we will understand it scalar triple product scalar triple product is represented in this way that is dot product a vector dot a vector dot product into cross product of this if we consider this resulting as z by the three order determinant in the first row we get coefficients of a next the coefficients of b and the coefficients of c we know how to solve the three order determinant now if you see these two are vectors so the resultant output will be a scalar output similarly vector triple product is cross product of these two and the cross product of resultant this one if you solve this output will be a vector so Scalar triple products gives scalar output, vector triple product gives vector output. Hope you understood it. Thank you guys. Thank you for watching my video. Hope you understood the concept. For any doubts and suggestions, please let me know in the comment box. For more details, you can refer these videos. Guys, help us to help you. So please like and share my video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Thank you.